think there's something interesting in the act of walking in itself, psychologically, and the impact that has on the brain, that has on the thought process. I think that's even more interesting when you put that into the company of cows, um, which are great big mammals with a kind of zen-like quality. You know, drovers would have gone at the cattle's pace because they didn't want the cattle to arrive all worn out and thin or hungry or weak. They wanted the cattle to arrive at market strong and happy and healthy and fit. So the cows would dictate the pace. Jovis roots are absolutely everywhere. Um, probably a large amount of our roads are built on Jovis roots. Loads of our railways are built on Jovis roots. And, and loads of our now walk, walking ways are built on Jovis roots. So there were many, many stories about cattle and droving and journeying across the land and different ways that people moved across the land then before we had trains and cars and planes. And the drovers of old were the, the, the people in the rural areas that would actually go to the cities. They'd go on long, perilous journeys through areas of the countryside with different accents and they'd experience all kinds of different people. And the people certainly that went on the long journeys would have had some incredible stories to tell. You know, these were the, the, the wanderers, the journeyers, the explorers of, of the age, you know. And the concept of herding, the idea of herding, the mechanics of herding, the culture of herding goes back, well, at least 5,000 years, probably longer. The concept of droving itself comes comparatively later because it is essentially a commercial concept. To be part of a herd, I think, they, they see the people walking along in a group as part of a herd and they join in with it. They're not likely to run off from a, a collective like that, they'll stick with it. They're, they're herd animals and I suppose that's half the way that they did it in practice, that they would have just joined in with, with the general flow of the way everybody was going. It finished in mid 19th century with the coming of the railways um, and also with things like fridges so they could actually kill meat and bring it across the sea from abroad refrigerated but they could also bring they had faster ways of bringing live animals as well so they didn't need to walk them all over the place so that's why droving finished it wasn't really I don't know that there was anyone necessarily to blame it certainly was to do with the Industrial Revolution would have been a, a, a an immense thing coming through a city, you know, thousands of cows in one go, going to the slaughterhouses and coming off the boats and the trains and that sort of thing. They were driving cattle from Galloway down to Norwich in the 16th and the 17th century, the market in Norwich, and they would, the Pennine Way, the famous Pennine Way, was the great drove. Market in Dumfries was, was booming. Galloway was booming. I know that they were very trusted people, um, the drovers that would have gone all the way to London, because they had a lot of money, a lot of wealth that they were being entrusted with. Um, and so they were, they were generally, I think, a bit older and married often and kind of built up a, a reputation, and a sort of a trusted reputation. We had the trysts, which were the gatherings. I mean, essentially a big festival party, I think, when they kind of came into town with the cows and the market happened. It wasn't just men trading for cattle. It was everybody else kind of getting together, having a big, you know, a big party. People were finding their mates, you know, there was a bit of a, a, bit of a festival going on.
Is it possible to drive cattle as people did back 150 years ago? Sadly, no. The rules on restrictions of movement on and off property would currently make that impossible. Um, and it could only be done through a special dispensation, um, which would be very hard to get. I've always had an affinity with this kind of thing. It's the getting away from your home community, I think, and going on this big adventure, this big travel, um, to somewhere you couldn't even imagine, London, and then going home again with, with the stories and the, the, the whole experience of having done it. Um, but yeah, I had, I've had a fascination with it for, for a long time. A pastoral society where cattle are walked out to pasture every day and brought back again, those cattle are going to be fitter, they're going to have harder feet, so they're going to be more able to withstand travelling a long distance. The old cattle of Galloway, they just called the black cow, but it wasn't the, the modern Galloway, which is the hornless black Galloway. It was a similar to the, the Black Highland, which they also just called the black cow. And it was horned like the Highland, and it was semi-feral. It, 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 it could survive on its own. My Highlands can as well. In all the Celtic languages, cow is boo, bow. And we get so many words in English and so many words in French as well from that. Like butter, and beef, Bodicea, the famous queen Bodicea. So that also translates as the victory queen, or it also translates as the virtuous queen. Cattle were virtue, they represented virtue. Cattle represented victory. Bounty, that the word bounty comes from the boo word. All the people around here were called the booers. In Ayrshire, they still call a cowman a boer. They stand for a people, a way of life, the boers. Getting wet on the second day, I think, brought a lot of authenticity to it. Had it been a, a lovely sunny day all the way through, um, we wouldn't have really known what it was like. When you get to the end of it and you've done half a drove, five miles, and your feet are soaking wet through and your modern waterproofs have already given up and you think, well, we've got to do the same distance again. And then you get your very own hedge to sleep under and a bowl of gruel in the morning, cold gruel, and then you go and do it all again. Um, and again and again and again until you get to London. So, yeah, we got a kind of a taste of, of what it would have been like in, in reality because of the weather, I think. The drovers would have come along this road and ended up in Dumbelington, which is the adjoining sort of village town. And the cows would have stayed overnight um, on their way to Market in Air. There's a big, big cattle market in Air used to be. Um, and so this brings them up into the edges of, of Bells Bank, which is the town that you can see behind us now. And it it's a very real route that drovers would have passed along. The drover could be seen as the symbol of that link of humanity to the cow, even to open up discussions about how we can somehow incorporate a greater understanding of the land and the animals around us with our modern technological life. We don't have to lose that connection, but we have to reconcile what our relationship is, not just to the land, but also to big animals, in this case cows. My belief is that the landscape as we look at it in Britain is entirely artificial and it should be forested. Now, haven't we cut down the forests over thousands of years to farm them? Then we pushed everything out in the highlands to make room for more sheep and now we manage it all as grass more. Um, so what is our ideal British landscape? We probably all have our own idea in our mind of what it should look like. The idea that you just put sheep over all may have appealed, you know, from the commercial point of view, and it may have seemed very practical and may have worked very well, and they made you more money, but biodiversity went out the window. It's all gone. It's all gone. It'll never be recovered the way it was. It cannot be. And that's the Scotland we inherited, in, you know, in the 30s and the 40s, yeah.
there's many people across the world practicing a pastoral way of life. I don't think we necessarily can or should go back to that way of life. But I think looking at other countries where they are still walking with cattle, living with a greater understanding of what happens with the elements, what happens with the flower and the fauna around them and the animals and how the animals react and communicating with them and walking on a, on a regular basis is how we can incorporate that way of life. People that live with their herds and move with their herds are great innovators, they're great problem solvers, they're um, able to deal with changes quick changes in the climate because they live in small groups and they can they can react quickly um, and some people have talked about how they they're a great solution to, to climate change and intensive farming and here we come to the to the nub of the matter which is this kind of tension between you know the people that say we need intensive farming to feed our ever expanding population and those that say well if we intensively farm the whole world what will we have left